society's gynocentrism causes people to recognize rightly that FGM is a barbarism that needs to stop, but makes those same people say that there's nothing wrong with MGM, saying that it's any, anything from it's a tradition uh, that's been going on for ages, as if, as if that's not also true for FGM, to it's different when it happens to girls and boys, and that it's not as bad when it happens to boys. This is a serious issue that, in my opinion, is intrinsic to fighting MGM because it falls right in line with the idea uh, of default value of girls and default disposability of boys. I will reference this again at a later point uh, in the video, but I want to get this out of the way really quick because the, t the subject of today's video uh, applies well enough to the general mutilation of both sexes. General mutilation is excused by its practitioners as a way to proclaim to the world the gender of the child for both for when it's done to the male child as well as the female one. When it's done to girls, it's this sick welcome to womanhood. When it's done to boys, it is treated as a likewise sick rite of passage for becoming an ideal man physically, done at mere eight days of living, if not immediately after birth. Considering the motives of genital mutilation, however, there is a sick irony that can't be missed. The core motives for FGM uh, seems to be modesty and control of the women's sexuality, with intact women generally regarded as dishonorable prostitutes. Egyptians perform the practice lest sexual desire is triggered when genitals rubbed against clothing, for instance. In the Western world, in the 19th century even, uh, there have been doctors who prescribed the procedure supposedly to fight masturbation or as cures for nymphomania. With regards to MGM, the motives tend to run parallel. In any given culture that has practiced it in history, a disturbing amount at that, uh, the motive was to suppress male sexual pleasure as well as to discourage masturbatory behavior. If not that, then the shame with regards to men's sexuality is still a factor in the motive. Cleanliness is often a cited excuse, whereas we ought to know by now that any man with a sense of bodily integrity and proud ownership of their physical self, if even that, can clean their genitals just fine. But I hypothesize that only a social mindset that devalues physical maleness as in itself dirty can lead to discouragement from cleaning their own genitals. And tribes, you know, because tribes are certainly geniuses, right? Um, th I thought circumcision was the solution to that, apparently. Uh, inflicting more punishment on an already, already unfairly maligned part of the human body. To those that practice it on those grounds, these are allegedly the positive reasons. Um, there have been negative grounds for male genital mutilation as well, uh, historically. In particular, the humiliation by the symbolic castration as inflicted on one's enemies or slaves. In corollary with the reasons actual castration has been performed in history, this symbolic castration also amounts to the feminization of the male victim in question. Let that sink in. The very reason to humiliate, shame, and feminize men who were enemies is the same procedure not only performed as an initiation into an idealized manhood, but done so at a at so young an age it couldn't have it couldn't possibly have the means, intellectual or physical, to defend himself. Infant male genital mutilation, euphemistically referred to as circumcision, is an attack on a given male's potential sexuality for being male. It is the symbolic castration designed to mitigate and suppress the male sex both physically and metaphysically. It is in fact traditionalism's equivalent of the radical left SJW's own mitigation of the biological gender of children that they've decided are transgender. All the arguments I've made just now can easily be applied to FGM as well. FGM's motive clearly has that uh, it's been meant to mitigate and suppress female sexuality for being female, and to use that as an initiate, initiation into a sort of idealized womanhood, uh, socially accepted womanhood, shall we say. Um, the argument from cleanliness is also applied as excuses for FGM as well. Uh, it, ca it can be said that the female body is seen by the, the practitioners' cultures as uh, shameful or sinful, in, and therefore this sense of shame and lack of esteem of the physical female self leads to its own un uncleanliness, a, a sort of fear of cleaning a, a, or, a, or sanely and regularly dealing with it 
which leads to more uncleanliness going in sort of a cycle. Uh, I, I know this sounds kind of like a, a sort of out there sort of a hypothesis, but I think I make sense. I hypothesize this to be true for men, and the same must be true for women, I think. If history has to answer for anything, it's the abject fear and resentment by tribes, societies, and cultures of the very idea of, of sex in its physicality. The sexual man was shamed and mitigated as a sexual man. The sexual woman was shamed and mitigated as the sexual woman. Symbolic castration to fulfill an idealized, broken form of masculinity, and the same is equivalent for women for a broken form of femininity. It is clear to the compassionate and rational-minded that bodily autonomy is for both boys and girls, but I must bring up the fact that uh, th of the subject at the start of this video to remind the viewer that sadly this is not a fact that is sunk in by and large. Gynocentrism, be it that of traditional conservatism or morally bankrupt social justice ideology, is an intrinsic factor to the problem of, ma of, in of infant male genital mutilation. Both forms of gynocentrism influences two patterns of social behavior. One, to defy the agency of the male child for being male and to mold it into a form of idealized creature that di it didn't consent to be for purposes of both mitigation of masculinity and making it a socially acceptable form of masculinity at the same time as I have just established here together kind of amounting to a broken, sacrificed form of masculinity. Two, in the same breath, to oppose FGM while criticizing the all-female equivalent reasons uh, a parallel to that of MGM given for this practice. This is gynocentrism in action. To come to the defense of female children at light speed at the very mention of the subject while with no sense of irony dismissing the problem of MGM. Again, it's not nearly as bad as they would say. Females are defended for being female in an instant. Males are not only given, not, not nearly given as much of a defense, but MGM is mainstream in places like the United States. Traditionalism and SJW ideology unite against the unbroken masculinity and seek, it, and seek to break it for their own ends. The so-called intellectual dark web whom I've called out in my last video, in particular Ben Shapiro, for his blatant glee in having arranged for the mutilation of his own son, as well as Dr. Jordan Peterson and Brett Weinstein for their excuse-making when it comes to MGM, uh, have garnered vast attention for speaking out against the social justice insanity of mitigating biological sex via transgender mania and denial of human biology and the fact that the differences of the sexes are real. At the same time, as stated in the in that in that video I made, uh, the the IDW have been making excuses for uh, the argue, from the argument of traditionalism and mitigation of sexuality to play apologist, if not downright advocate for MGM. And, and yes, you guessed correctly. Um, the very same people who uh, uh, likely will rush to the defense of girls like a white knight with warp nacelles on his horse, and speak speak out about how terrible FGM is. You know, they're the very same people. But again, it's not the same as boys. It's not nearly as bad, they say. So a bit of a tangent here. A commenter on my video about the IDW on YouTube uh, linked me to an article from uh, Eric Klopper's website about a conversation he had with two mem two more members of the IDW, Sam Harris and Brett's brother, Eric Weinstein. Joy. Uh, reading the article, uh, it was pretty clear that, that this this gynocentric bias is ever-present in both Harris and Weinstein as both jump to their default critical stance regarding FGM. When the subject turned to MGM, um, Harris goes on a they're-not-the-same-thing narrative, and then Weinstein makes a strange and absurd remark about the anti-circumcision issue as an, attack, uh, an, ex as an excuse to attack Islam, of all things. Harris then says, they are totally different practices. Equating the two does a lot to minimize the horror of what we are doing to our baby girls. In other words, treating genital mutilation equally for boys and girls is a minimization of baby girls. Wow. Um, this type of approach is straight out of the feminist playbook in which actual uh, equal treatment is really anathema. Um, Harris exposes his own blatant gynocentrism here to be sure. Uh, you should read the whole article by the way. Um, Eric Klopper's responses are all proper and truthful, but it takes 
quote unquote intellectuals like Harris and Weinstein to uh, weasel their way out of admitting that they were flat wrong. By the way, Mr. Eric Klopper, if you're by any chance watching this video, please reach out to me. I I'd love to have a video conversation with you or something to put on my channel. All right, uh, so tangent over on that one. So, um, but back on track here. The point is that trad cons, despite all their criticisms of the insanity of child gender bending and the advocacy of puberty blockers and basically irreversible treatments, advocate their own form of gender interference and disdain for the, the biological sex as it is. To any of you in the intellectual dark web who are listening, you say that biological sex and sex differences are real. Okay, fair enough, you're right. Um, will you ever be uh, so bold as to advocate for not breaking biological sex as it was originally intended and to advocate for the autonomy of all children no matter what their sex? You, uh, you may already do that for girls, at least in the context of FGM. Would you be willing to do the same for men, for boys? I didn't think so. To you who are the audiences of the intellectual dark web, consider this please. They aren't the male positive figures you may think they are most of the time. You, you think they praise masculinity. They want to break it, as a matter of fact, no less than the feminists. If you want to take men's issues seriously, if for some and if it's for some reason you, you must point to this intellectual dark web as a source for that that kind of insight, but goodness sakes, don't let them be your first source and, and be critical about it. Like kind of take it apart and see if they work or not. Because the way I see it, they want to mitigate you and your masculinity. They want you broken physically, spiritually, and sexually. No less than the radical left.